Hello everybody, it's Wendy again and today I've got some really cute Christmas card projects for you to try. I've done two designs and I'm going to show you exactly how to paint them yourself and what colors I used. So get out your paints and get out some watercolor paper. This is 140 pound watercolor paper and that's all you need and cut some pieces and let's get started. I've already done the drawings and I've got a simple little stocking here which I haven't filled in the top because I'm going to put some sprigs in that you don't need to draw those and the other one is this little snowman to draw it all you do is line line make this little scarf make this oval put a few lines for the snow draw a hat on stick stick some stick arms on and a face and you're done and so let's get started on this. I'm going to start first with this one. I'm using kind of a basic palette, not too many colors, because Christmas colors tend to be kind of basic colors. And you can pick your theme if you want to have blue and blue and blue or whatever, or, or traditional Christmas colors like red and green. It doesn't matter. You can paint them however you like. So let's begin. I'm using a number four brush, which is a sable mix. And I love sables because they hold lots of water. And I'm going to do this one in just traditional red and green colors. So for my red, I'm using alizarin crimson because it's a deeper red. It's not, it's not a flat red. It's a, almost like cherry. And I'm going to do alternating stripes. First, I'm going to fix a couple of these stripes because I think they need to go around the object a little bit more. So my thing is here, like this. Don't be afraid to erase and correct, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And if I'd left them they probably would have been fine, to an fine anyway, because perfect accuracy isn't really the point in this pr particular project. So all I'm doing now is just painting in the red in alternating stripes and dry on or wet on dry, which means the paint is wet, but the paper is dry. I've discussed wet, wet and wet and dry brush in different other videos of mine, but for this one we're simply doing the easiest peasiest wet paint on dry paper. Because of the depth of the colors, it's going to pretty much cover up the pencil lines. And if it doesn't, if they're still showing along the side or wherever, that's fine. You can easily erase them afterwards. They don't erase through the paint so well. Sometimes they do, but um, it doesn't really matter. This is a really simple project and whoever you're giving a card to isn't going to say, oh dear, she didn't erase their pencil lines. I think the pencil lines actually give it a little bit more character. Now I've cut a couple of small pieces of paper and I'm not doing this as a folded card for the simple reason that it wastes a lot of watercolor paper. Unless you want to paint on the inside of your card as well, you may want to just use it on the front. And how I, I'm going to suggest that you do that is you can paint it this size. If it turns out that you need to make your card a different size, that's fine, depending what, what you have for envelopes. But this is a piece of card stock, and I would I would fold it or cut it how, whatever, to whatever size I want. Then I would cut this to fit on the front and glue it on the front. That way it gives it a little bit of dimension, and you can also then print your message with your printer on the inside of your card if you so wish. There are my red stripes and I'm going to go back in with some hooker's green which is a nice deep Christmassy green. I actually have a little puddle of it here. This little spot is not dry yet so I'm going to try and keep away from that. Oh do I really want green against my green greenery? I should have thought of that. I think it'll be okay. I'll use a different color of green. Of 
greens always go with greens regardless. Now you can leave a little bit of white between the colors if you like. I kind of like to do that because I just like the look of it. Depending what kind of painting you're doing, you may or may not want to do that, but I like having a little bit of white showing because it's just kind of charming. See, I've left a little, some little flecks in there. Come close, touch a little bit. Try not to go over the edge, which sometimes is tricky to do when you're working really small. Now this one here is dry so I can go ahead and paint up next to it. Not that I would likely touch the painted or the wet part anyway but sometimes uh, you can't help it and it just turns out to not be a very good move. To do something a little unusual, I'm going to paint the heel and the toe a different color. I only just decided that now. As you can tell, I didn't have a great and elaborate plan for painting this, mainly because I want to keep it simple. And if you paint it once and you're not crazy about it, just draw another picture and paint it again. I've decided to use this permanent yellow green so that I can pick up the color in the greenery as well, thereby sort of pulling the painting together. So we'll just pop this in here on the toe of the stocking and on the heel. going to touch that pencil line. I want to erase it afterwards. Now before I start painting the greenery, I want to add something else. I decided I'd like to have a bow up here on this greenery and here's how you draw a bow. It's so so simple. Just a sort of rounded square like that and then a piece like this. put as many loops as you want into it. I think we'll just leave it that way. So I'm using alizarin crimson again on, on this bow. And what I'm going to do paint the whole thing. It'll be a little bit trickier to find my lines underneath, but you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. Because I want it to look like a satin bowl. It's quite small, that's okay. So this is the first layer of color on my bow. And as soon as this is dry, I'll show you the next step. Okay, now my, my bow is pretty much dry. So I'm going to go over just parts of it with the same red so that it has some contrast. And yes, this is kind of tiny work, which is, you know, just use a small brush. And I'm going to put in some reflection on this satin. And to do that, I'm making, leaving a little space like this. I 
over here, same thing. So there's some variation, a couple of little dabs on there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of greenery here and I'm going to start with some just some leaves. So we'll pretend that this is a bit of mistletoe or something. Put a little stem out here. So not aiming for perfection. Just gonna turn it around and press a little bit, let go. Press a little bit, let go. Do another one over here. We'll just press a little bit, let go. Perfect. I'm going to go in and put in some more greenery here. Um, first, I think I'll get rid of my pencil lines since they're not helping anything. <sighs> now I'm just going to dab in some little things here with this color and then I've mixed up some sap green. There's a little bit too much in my brush there. I'm just going to kind of fill this in, leaving a few little white flecks. And then take some out. Now I think I'll just do some larger leaves with with the sap green. And then I'll I'll fill in with the um, evergreen. So I'm going to paint these sort of in front of and behind the other green leaves and just kind of go like this, little sprigs. And do a long one in here. And by doing this you just flick the paint away from the center. But remember Evergreen boughs are not flat unless they're, I think, a hemlock. So not you don't want all of the the needles to just go like this. Otherwise, they they look okay, but it's not really true to life. Look a little bit more realistic if some of them go this way and some go this way because it's it's a rounded object. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me, but I'm not sure that I'm getting it explaining it well enough. Anyway, we'll just do some of these. I'll throw another one in behind here, a nice long piece. So, do some of these and then they get smaller towards the end. Be afraid to move your paper around. You don't have to do it all facing one way. It's whatever works for your hand. I think I'll even put some behind the bow. In retrospect, I wish I'd painted this red or this light green, which, you know, is, it doesn't matter, but. So what I'm going to do is to darken the greenery underneath the bow and around in here, I've 
put in a little bit of Prussian blue into the dark green and I'm just gonna plop it in there take too much take some of that water out just just so that there's more contrast with the hookers green of this base now to finish it off, I'm going to put an outline in it using this bright gold from the Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors. And because I might want to cut it smaller to fit on the Christmas card that I'm going to make, I'm going to put it um, inside the border here. And I'm, I'm actually going to just eyeball it. And the way I'm going to do that is to hold my finger against the side of the paper and take it down from there. So I haven't drawn a line, I'm just freehanding it. But in order to keep it uniform, this is my strategy. So I'm doing the same over here. I'm totally guessing where the line's gonna meet. It's going to be about there. Now, since this one has gone a, bit, a little bit over, what I'm going to do is just cross them at all the corners. So it looks like it was intentional. It. How pretty is that? And how easy is that? I mean, it hardly took me any time at all. And it won't take you any time at all either. Now, for my second one, I'm doing this little snowman or snow individual. And I'm, I'm going to use similar colors, just uh, a little bit off tones. So I'm using red and green, but I'm using a mixture of permanent yellow green and phthalo green for the, the band on the hat and the scarf. So it's a little bit softer green. So we'll just pop that in there. And let's do this scruffy little ball at the end of the, the toque. You know in Canada this kind of cat is called a toque. I think in the US it would be called a beanie, or I'm not really sure what a long tasseled one would be. For the scarf, I'm mixing it a little bit stronger for around the neck, and then I'm going to water it down just slightly for the ties just so that they show up a little bit more. So you can see the difference here, and I'm leaving a bit of white there so that I don't get um, any kind of color bloom. Turning it so that it's easy for my hand. So we'll put that in there and then pick up a little bit of the paint in just a, a slightly stronger mix again. And there we go. 
For the rest of our little character's hat, I'm using Matter Lake Light. And you can see the difference in color of red uh, between this one and alizarin crimson that I used on the stocking. It's almost a truer red red, if that makes any sense. need a bit more moisture in this because it's kind of trying to make watermarks. You don't want that. Now to create a um, spherical shape for the body of this little guy, uh, I mixed up some cerulean blue and some permanent blue violet in a really watery consistency and I'm just going to throw a little bit along the one edge here down the face and the or the head and the body in kind of a rounded edge like that and then soften the edge I just took the water out of my or the paint out of my brush so it gives it a nice soft edge and I'm going to do the same here going right over that twig arm because that's going to be colored darker anyway Take the water out of there and smooth the edge with just a wet brush so that it's soft. And then on, on this side, I'm doing the same thing only with a much narrower line, just so you can see the edge of the snowman. The paint was quite a bit drier, so it needs to have more water added and just the tiniest bit on the side of the face same reason using that same color mix with, mix with just a little bit more blue in it let me just mix it up here I'm going to indicate the snow that's more dense than I want it to be color wise so I'm taking it out shadow here around the base. For the carrot, that's an easy one. I'm using actually, let me see if I like this. I think that'll work. It's a good carrot color. That's just um, permanent orange. This is dry now so I'm going to paint the twigs that are the little character's arms and I'm just using straight raw umber. elbow here. Now the arms and the carrot are still a bit, little bit wet, so I'm going to be careful not to touch them. But I'm going to do the pieces of coal, which is the eyes and mouth, with this um, micron pen. You can find a link for these in my description below. And this is, I could do it with, with a paintbrush, but this is easier and more accurate. I 
I don't want my little coal pieces to be perfect anyway, so they're not perfect little round circles. Kind of gives the face some life, doesn't it? I've decided to do something a little bit radical with my snowman. I'm going to go over the greens with this blue-green aqua color from the, um, the pearlescent palette and see what happens. We'll definitely give it some sparkle and it does change the color but it's nice to have the green underneath because I found with these pearlescent colors sometimes they, um, when they're by themselves, it's not as dramatic. One thing I hardly ever do is keep my paint over here when I'm painting over here because there's always the danger of something dropping on the picture when you're going back and forth like this. And I'm right-handed, so I really should put them on this side. But for now, I'm just being careful, or bringing my hand around the bottom, just so I don't have any nasty accidents. In painting, there are happy accidents, and then there are not-so-happy accidents. I like this decision. I think it gives it more pizzazz. And I think I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other one, and that is to make a line around it. But this one I'm going to make bigger. So this will be, hmm, let me see. Let me see, an inch in, can't have an inch here. Let me just see. I think I need to measure. So I've drawn a really, really pale line here with uh, a 2H pencil. You can actually get a 4H pencil, which is even lighter, but has that and has a harder lead. So I'm going to paint this bluey green in a nice line. This aqua, I like aqua colors. This is actually one of my favorite colors. Now it's going to turn out a little bit differently from this part because it doesn't have the green underneath it, but we're going to try it anyway. I'm just going to carefully draw my arm down not moving my hand, just pulling my elbow down. if it wiggles a little bit or wobbles because it's freehand but you get a straighter line if you pull your arm down rather than just use your hand how creamy these pearlescent paints get. Okay, we're going to just do this last one. Oops, stay on the line. I'm going to do that one again. Just because there's a little wobble in the middle there. Okay, that is super cute. It's just super cute. Now, I just have to erase these lines where they come out across the edges, the corners. <laughs> the 
this is just the pencil line. I'm using a tough eraser. This is an old, like, old hard kneaded eraser and it erases really well uh, this hard pencil. I've tried other ones and they're okay, but this one does the best job. That's why I don't throw it away, even though I bought a new soft one. Now that is so pretty, but you know what? I'm going to add some more color. Well, actually, I'm going to add silver paint because I can. So I'll just mix this up and I'm going to attempt to paint it just inside this line here. Wait, I've got a pencil line here that needs to disappear. Again, moving my arm and using the silver pearlescent paint. Come on, Wendy, keep it steady. It kind of wobbles when my arm goes over the edge of my table. It's not what I want, but it, look how pretty this is. Oh my goodness. This paint is just dreamy. There's a link for it below if you're interested in purchasing some. It really is a lot of fun. And in my next video, I've got some really exciting stuff. I'm trying some really new things and I'm just like, can hardly contain myself. But I wanted to get the Christmas card ones done first because it's that time of year where you need time to make them, so I had to get on the ball and paint some. Now I have another video with Christmas cards as well, which are just so simple and so fun to do. So be sure to have a look at that one. There's a little link here above where you can find it. I love that. In fact, I love it so much, I'm going to add some of it here to the snow. A little sparkle. There! It's so pretty. Square this corner a bit. It's a bit rounded. I think that's good. So here are today's two Christmas card designs. Really easy to do. It'll take you half an hour at most, but really they, they don't take very long at all. And the drawings are very simple. Remember, they don't have, have to be perfect and they don't have to look like mine. But you can make whatever you want. And when you're done, like this, you can see this is uneven here because of where I drew my figure on the piece of paper. So when I put it, on, when I cut it to put it on, on a piece of cardstock, I will just trim it around, evenly around the outside edge, same with this one, and then glue it on to the cardstock. And then we've got a Christmas card. Or you can also take it and if you've got a scanner, just scan them. Uh, you can adjust them size-wise and print them right onto your cardstock if you want to do that. And that's all there is to it. So before you go, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell to be notified when I've got a new video. And I'll see you next time.